Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to perform the Wilcoxon signed rank test in SPSS. So before we perform the test, let's take a quick look at the data we're going to use in this example. Um, the Wilcoxon signed rank test is effectively the equivalent of a paired t-test. So our data are paired. In our case here, we have one measurement uh, performed on two occasions. So in our first column, we have a clone. These are the names of poplar trees, okay, of a common uh, tree type. But these 13 different clones of this tree. And we have measured uh, in August and in November uh, in a polluted area, we have measured the aluminium content in milligrams uh, per gram of wood. So how much uh, aluminium is in a gram of wood in August? And we want to compare that to the same measurement in November. And we're interested to determine uh, if um, the um, if there's a difference in the aluminium concentration over these two months, an autumn month and a winter month. So let's go ahead now and perform the test. Now there's two ways to do this in SPSS and I'm going to show you both ways in this video. Our first way is we're going to select the Analyze menu. Go down to Non-Parametric Test because the Wilcoxon Sign Rank Test is a non-parametric test. And we can see here that we have the options in here to compare independent samples or related samples. So our samples are related or paired, so we're going to select the Related Samples option. We've got three tabs uh, um, across the top over here that we need to take a look at. In our first one, the objective, I'm going to leave that as it is. This is automatically comparing the observed data to be hypothesized, so we don't need to change that. The second tab is the fields tab, so this is where I need to tell SPSS what to examine. Now I'm going to ignore the clone variable because we're not, that's just a, 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 a labels in our data set, so we don't need to do anything with that. And I want to take the August and November data and put them into the test field. So click on the copy button, select November and copy so that we can get August, November over into the test fields. The third and last tab up here is the settings tab. And in here, I can actually uh, uh, choose to select the test. I want to leave it at automatically choose the test based on the data because our data is set up to do this. Uh, but if it wasn't, you could select the customized test. And in our case here, the Wilcoxon uh, match test uh, is listed. But I'm going to switch this back to automatic. And the last thing I want to check here is the test options in the settings tab. Uh, I'm going to perform this test at an alpha value of 0 0.05, which is the default value here. Uh, but if you wanted to change this to say um, 0 0.01, this is the place to do it. So I'm going to go back to the fields tab and now I'm ready to perform the test. So uh, across the bottom of the window here, we can see a play button for run. So I'm going to click on this to run the test. And here is our output in the test. Now, the first thing to note is this table at the top, which really tells us almost everything that we need to know in this test. Um, we can see that, first of all, the null hypothesis is displayed. And in a Wilcoxon signed rank test, the null hypothesis is going to be that the median differences between, in our case, August and November is equal to zero. In other words, there's no difference between the medians. It doesn't need to list the alternative hypothesis because it's the opposite of this. And it will state that the median of differences between August and November is not equal to zero. We can see that SPSS has automatically selected the um, Wilcoxon signed rank test, and we have a significance value here of 0 0.039, because that value is less than our significance level, which we left at the default of 0 0.05. Because it's less than 0 0.05, we have a decision to reject the null hypothesis. So in other words, we have found that there is a difference between the levels of aluminium uh, between in the, in the trees between August and November. So it would appear that the month would have an effect on the um, levels of aluminium. In our output down here, uh, we can also see our test statistics. So our Wilcoxon signed ranks test statistic uh, is 75. So we will need that when we are reporting our results. And we can also see that once again, it, it displays the significance value, the p-value uh, equal to 0 0.039. Um, the Wilcoxon sign rank test, the sign is either positive or negative, the plus or minus, that's what the name sign comes from. And at the display histogram here comparing these, and we can see that there's quite a difference between the number of positive and negative signs in here. So using this particular method here, we have found that there is a difference between uh, the two groups. Let's take a look at the second method for performing this test. So once again, I'm going to choose the Analyze menu. Scroll down to Non-Parametric Tests, and this time select Legacy Dialogues. And in here, there's an option to select uh, related samples, so two related samples. So I'm going to select that option here. 
um, I will expect and will get the same results. So in our uh, two related samples tests, I'm just going to copy both values. So select August and copy it over to test pairs. Select November and also copy that over to test pairs. You can see that the Wilcoxon <coughs> test is already checked here, so I don't need to do anything there. And if I select the options button, we can see that we have some options in here. I'm not going to choose any of those. I'm going to choose cancel and I'm ready to perform the test. So click on OK. So slightly different outputs this time, but the same result. Uh, here we do get um, the mean rank. So we are um, com comparing ranks between the positives and negatives. So we can see that there's a difference here between them. And uh, also that that difference is significant in our test statistics table at the bottom here. We once again get a p-value of 0 0.039. This is less than our alpha value of 0 0.05. Therefore, once again, we reject the null hypothesis. So we don't get the hypothesis or the decision when we you choose this method to conduct the Wilcoxon sign rank test. That's why the other method that I've just shown you is uh, a preferable method in, in my opinion. So that's how you perform the Wilcoxon signed rank test in SPSS. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.